second. Hello and welcome. My name is Elvira Liel. I serve as the Assistant Vice President for Community Relations here at UTSA. And on behalf of the University Relations and the work done through the UTSA's West Side Community, Community Center, Relations here at UTSA. we present a Chagla on muralism, past heritage and current projects in San Antonio. Our moderator today is Dr. Teresa Ekman, Professor in Contemporary Latin American Art in the Department of Art and Art History. Dr. Ekman specializes in modern and contemporary Latin American art with a focus on contemporary medical art. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elvira, for inviting this group of artists and arts, organiza arts organizers uh, from San Antonio today. We're so excited to have this charla on muralism, the state of muralism its heritage and its, its current, current projects that are going on. Um, I, uh, as, a, as a professor of Latin American art at, uh, here at UTSA, I've had the opportunity to teach uh, a class both on public art in San Antonio and on muralism across the borders. And uh, today I've compiled for you a kind of a collage of moments over the, the last decade uh, where students have presented on murals in San Antonio, such as the one of the murals we're featuring today, which is La Musica de San Antonio by David Blancas. Um, and I, I'm, I would like to show this film also to show um, how students have, um, students or artists, now working professional artists like Brice Monroe, like Ana Laura Hernandez, um, have gone through UTSA's program, have learned about muralism, and are now practicing artists and contributing to uh, the um, development of muralism here in San Antonio. And not only that, but they've had the opportunity to work with seasoned muralists like Adriana Garcia uh, and have, have uh, been participated in, in several collaborations. So I'd like to show to our audience uh, this collage. It's about 15 minutes, and then we will have a very rich uh, charla with uh, the very artists who are featured in this film. So uh, with no further ado, I will uh, share my screen here and um, move through this uh this film so we'll start here and i will make it large for you there we go and here we have the mexican version of the uh, Dias de los Muertos skeleton, a male and a female. On either side, the male plays the guitar as a cantador, singing uh, as a way of self-expression and exorcism of the soul. We have candles lit, symbolic of prayer. And also we have a bottle of alcohol, which oftentimes are found on these altars. Uh, maybe a reference to uh, sacramental wine in Catholic church and also uh, just coping with uh, the stresses of life. And if you see that picture right there of that young girl, that was a mystery. When I came to this wall for my uh, preliminary examination, and when I met with David Blancas for the interview, he told me that this young girl was not connected to him directly, but is actually a portrait of the mother of the woman who owns the building. And so that was her way of incorporating appreciation for her uh, family and being a part of the culture and part of the movement that the world is commemorating. Moving on, we have here the Eastwood Country Club presents Doug Sam. We are with UTSA, we are art majors, and we are doing a class from public art.
Park in San Antonio, and we are reviewing and examining this mural. La Musica de San Antonio, painted by David Blancas and uh, promoted by San Anto Cultural Arts. And so when they were in the middle of it. So bring that camera. Oh, and my phone. You are on camera right now. Come on. Okay. No. <laughs> if you want, you can park and I'll I finish. Said, and I, then we'll, yeah. if you want, we have you. Okay. I'm on my way to me. So but in the very beginning, I had my business over here on the corner, the A Amigo Valbons. And I was really worried about how I was going to be able to thrive in, in a space here. And so a friend of mine who happened to be like, Talking about, we've been talking about you. Nice to meet you. All right, uh, next, of course, Manny Castillo. So he takes it responsible for this mural. I mean, he was basically the driving force initially. What uh, the owners wanted was uh, a mural of uh, the Alamo, the Bonnets, dancing, you know, dancing scenes. But Manny said, he said, no, that's not what we need, and this is what he wanted, and that happened. This particular size of the mural was a challenge, and David Blancas and San Antonio Cultural Arts relied upon both the collaborative efforts of other artists and the cooperative work of volunteers in the community. Other artists that were on the project were Adriana Garcia, who completed both Lydia Mendoza and Aurora, Aurora Alguin, and who is uh, one of the dancing figures on the far right of the mural. And from what I understand that this is uh, the grandparents of her, the artist. And so she chose to commemorate them because they would listen to this music and dance. To be here at San Antonio Cultural Arts, thank you for having us. This is our journalism class from UTSA. And we're here with Adriana Garcia, who is the interim director here at San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And actually she, uh, Jackie, which is interesting, right? Juan Hans, Jackie Juan Hans, who's really older, really eccentric, beautiful lady who passed away a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she is, she uh, introduced us to the great slate from Mexico, Rivera, Orozco, Seattle. The chaos uh, in the background is the fire, uh, which Orozco, we all know, frequently relies on in his work. Um, in, in the background here, this, we have this gob of chaos and confusion. And this fire, basically, it symbolizes the purification of humanity, basically through total annihilation, uh, a catharsis, as the title says. Uh, and speaking of catharsis, um, interestingly enough, uh, Roscoe didn't actually name it catharsis. Uh, Mexican critic Justino Fernandez coined the term uh, catharsis because of the fire and his use of, uh, it, of purifying. Uh, Roscoe's original title was The Contemporary World, and this was his vision of the, um, the worker in the back who's carrying the communist flag. Uh, we also see the workers on the, on the left. Um, carrying the um, the National League of Campesinos, the LNC flag, on the top right, or I think Amodotti is in right, uh, like is in, re is in red. Uh, Frida Kahlo, of course, in red with a red star. And uh, David Osvaldo. She's the one who introduced me to those artists. You know, I was like 15, 16. Um, and then, in addition to that, she was the one who took us on a trip through the West Side to the Casiano Ports. I don't know if that is the Casino Ports are off of Hilton, and uh, in the early 80s, um, there was a, a muralism movement where they involved the community to create murals, murals about <laughs> the Mexican culture. So there's a mural about Quisineras, there's a mural about um, uh, Cleto Rodriguez, who was the Medal of Honor winner. When she did that, it really reinforced um, myself because I remember passing by those murals as a kid going to my grandfather's house. So, Casiano let the murals. You know, it was, I mean, it was begging for them. 
to the, the, the artist who got the pay from, from UTSA, who restored the work, is, is portrayed right here on the end. That's right. Yes. Like I said, some of those some of those words that I heard in the mural, I kind of wanted to integrate into the design. The definition, uh, mojerista, someone who brings awareness to struggle for liberation from distinct experiences of uh, subjugation. They worked religious among Latinos, Latinos while denouncing sectarianism and traditional tactics. I'm answering questions. Um, we, like I said, we interviewed Mary Rodriguez um, last Friday. She was so nice and so gracious and yeah it was, we had a really good talk we spent a couple hours with her and uh, it's a good experience and then she just published a, like an article in her yes. just yesterday it was uh, published right and yeah she, yeah and uh, she i didn't know that she was inducted into the design of your name she was so nice like we actually got to meet her before when we were all to hear what i'm doing I mean, she's always willing to help. She's like messaging us through Facebook. You know, like yeah. she could make it. She has to help with the mural, but she was sending us extra information. She messaged us last night. Oh, good, luck. good luck, girls. All that. She can't be here. She's actually we asked her to be here, but she's at the San Antonio mural today. Uh, they're all, they have limited time there, so she's over there kind of overseeing that project right now. Is so. she originally something? Uh, yes. Yeah, West Side. Mm -hmm. That's what it was like. The whole theme was a little bit East and also like kind of like a feminist. Um, you know, powerful woman. And my first reaction was like, why Claudia? I mean, like, I mean, she didn't really do anything. Just, I mean, you know, she like died on the way here. Yeah, it was something in her eyes, and you captured her eyes so well, Anna. Uh, also, putting her here. Like, I know she wasn't saying, I'm going to go to San Antonio, but she did want to come to the United States of America, and she got that part. So, it, in the end, I just kind of like, when painting it, I would just say, like, we, you know, it's not the same at all, but it's, it was the best we could do. And it's kind of like, you're, you're here. You are here. Like, your face is here. You're here. More people than you probably imagine know about you, and yeah, I think it was kind of like that kind of vibe. Like we're here, here. yeah. Here. Um, and that's what I I don't know if it's a regional thing, but it's that here. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. it has a way. It has a way. Like what does that say? Yeah. You know, kind of like they're still here and not gone. That's what it is. Yeah. So it's only a regional. Or yeah, some of the marches. So you know, Cesar Chavez was in there. You know, we kind of. Yeah, yeah uh, but definitely when somebody notable or this community passes away, it's like hashtag. <clears throat> so 
So I um, first want to thank everybody uh, for for your generosity in um, you know in being able to in sharing your work in uh, sharing your well in sharing. Um, so uh, I, I'd like to open up you know the the panel to some rich discussion. Uh, we have with us uh, David Blanca from he's he's working on the restoration project of of his mural La Musica de San Antonio, which we saw at the beginning of of this film. And then we also have with us uh, Rhys Munro, who was featured <laughs> a lot in this film and and what I enjoy is seeing, you know, the development of our artists, you know, from students to learning about muralism to uh, volunteering on murals, you know, even De Blancas's beginnings were as a volunteer on, on the Brighter Days mural with Adriana Garcia. And, uh, and then he just took off from there. Um, and we also have with us Ben Tremillo from the San Anto, from San Anto Cultural Arts. Uh, he's the executive director. We have Adriana Garcia here as well. Um, also you know, featured in this film. Uh, and uh, Anna, uh, the two of them have just collaborated, just inaugurated the mural that you saw at the very end of the film, uh, the homage to Vanessa Guillem. And then also with us is Ramiro Gonzalez from the um, Westside Development Corporation, who is championing the restoration project of La Musica de San Antonio, and uh, his associate Melinda Gonzalez. And I think that is all of us, right? So um, I guess I'll just open up the floor um, and we'll just start with a question and we'll see where it goes from there. So, uh, of course, this uh, panel is about. Hispanic Heritage Month. And um, so I, I wanted to ask, I know each of you have had, uh, you either have family ties with Mexico or um, have traveled to Mexico City. Uh, I know that, for example, I know David Lancas, for example, took some time after his studies at UTSA and traveled to Mexico City, but I don't know what he saw there and how that may have been in terms of muralism and how that may have been important to him. But as we saw in the film, both Anna and, and Rhys Monroe traveled to Mexico City with me, actually, with a group of us uh, within a class on muralism and did research and presented on murals uh, by the three greats. So how has your, the question is, how has your encounter with Mexican muralism you know, which begins basically in 1920s uh, and, and goes on through most of the 20th century up until um, the deaths of Orozco and Rivera, well, in CK, late in 1960, in the late 1960s. But how has it informed your own development and approach as a muralist? And uh, you can, anyone want to uh, offer something on that? briefly, or you can just unmute yourself and, and share. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, so I guess my answer to that question would be, um, I mean, I've looked at murals in all different types of cities, and I think specifically from Mexican muralism, what I took from it is um, when it comes to public art and murals, it's not uh, just art for art's sake. It's, it, has a, it has a message and it has a message that reflects the community directly around it, around that mural. Um, and I think for me, outside of um, perhaps aesthetic, aesthetics and color palette, I think, um, I guess the didactic uh, message and moral of, of the murals is, is definitely what I, what I took from it. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh -huh. before I took the class, I knew nothing, like nothing about Mexican art. Like I think I knew about Frida Kahlo and like 
and I knew she was married to the guy who painted the the women with the flowers. That's how I knew Diego Rivera. And I had like I think I didn't I didn't really have too much of an interest, but it wasn't until obviously your class and you know because I'm from Laredo, I'm Laredo, Texas, on the border. Uh, my family, I'm a first generation American. My family still lives in Mexico. Um, it's just it's different. It's just different over there. I don't we don't have any major museums. We don't have any murals. I mean, if we do, I mean, I don't remember seeing any murals. Like it's yeah, there's no murals in Laredo. I mean, now there might be, but. I didn't grow up with that kind of, um, I don't know, representation of my own people on walls, you know, because we, you know, we can't find them on TV. So I just, watching the video, it was just, I don't know, just, yeah. Um, but studying with, you know, studying with you and going to Mexico City and studying the Los Grandes, it was just, it really, I don't know, just enriched my sense of self and the way I make art is just completely different now. You know, it comes from a more broader place instead of just like feelings and whatnot, which is usually in like my paintings are usually super angsty, but like this is more, I don't know, it serves a purpose. It just, it, yeah, it, that's all I got. <laughs> thank, thank you, Anna. Adriana, did you want to respond as well to that question? You need to unmute yourself first, please. Thank you. Uh, so I have family in Mexico, and um, I, I had the privilege of being able to to go to Mexico City for a wedding for one of my cousins. It was after college, and uh, we we were able to go see the murals at the Palace of Bellas Artes. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely just mind blowing because I remember looking at those artworks through books for years um, and having those images on paper influence me. And then to actually see them in person was really overwhelming and um, impactful. And not only that, um, I remember my dad telling me about Los Los Niños Héroes de Chapultepec, and apparently when he went to Mexico, and it was an image, a mural that he saw in his youth that impressed him enough to tell us about it, and I was able to see that, and um, along with taking away from it, like, message uh, for the people and, 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 and that, but also just the perspective and the the underlining geometry of, of a mural and that impact that, that, that I believe the Mexican muralist really, really showed very well. Yeah, thank you. And, and I'm going to ask you, maybe you can think about it as David answers this question as well, but, but I'd also like to know, of course, you know, what is, what is unique about San Antonio muralism right versus that of california or mexico city um and also what what is well i'll stop there but maybe david would you you know uh, tell us what your experience with mexico and if it's if it informs your work if it's important yeah what well, happened in um i was born in mexico so i i there is that dual sense of identity within me having been raised here in texas as a texan but having been born in mexico it, i was you know, one foot on one side of the border on the other growing up. So uh, my, my experience as a muralist, as an artist, uh, is more border-centric. It wasn't until the past uh, two years that I actually went to Mexico City and took a much deeper dive into the culture, certainly in muralism and what it signifies to the people. As I kind of echo the sentiments of, of Reese, is that uh, it's, it's definitely a rich tapestry that they, and, and narrative involving the revolution and the, the people of Mexico that they have that connection to muralism. Um, and having seen the same uh, Palacio de Bellas Artes that Adriana saw, saw those, those murals, that was an eye-opening experience. Again, only having seen them through the internet and through uh, books, um, I brought that back with me. And I, even though I've been kind of exploring my palette um, in terms of how you can engage an audience on a grander scale when you do a large piece of art, public art like La Musica, um, just seeing how the, the, the mural masters in Mexico approach that and, and were able to engage the audience on that kind of sense of scale. That's something that I think has definitely enriched my work 
something that I aspire to it, uh, with every project. And you're from, originally you're from Coahuila, right? You're from the north. Yeah, I was born in a little town, a little mining town called Nueva Rosita, Coahuila, about two hours past uh, Iguaz. Yeah. So what is your, as, as an artist, what is your vision for, you know, for the west side, you know, from the perspective of artists? Well, the west side, the city in general, of course, uh, murals have been concentrated on the west side, but they've, they've expanded out a bit uh, from there. But um, so what is your, and, and also maybe as artists and also as developers, so maybe we could get uh, Ramiro to respond to this as well. So what is your vision for the West Side, uh, where La Musica is and, and many other murals, uh, you know, from that of history and from that of development, what, what do you see? Uh, what's your vision for the West Side? For me or is that for, for Ramiro? I think Ramiro, let's get his voice in here. Sure. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you. Thank you for the, for the question. You know, we, we always have looked at, you know, I, I'm born and raised here in San Antonio. Um, so I kind of never lived on the west side, but I grew up on it. My family's church was, was, is on the west side. And so I spent a lot of time just kind of walking the streets, seeing the murals kind of come, come together. And, you know, there's always there's always this desire to see the West side grow and become stronger and to improve. And I think everybody wants that. Everyone wants to see more opportunity. And really that's what the WDC is about, West side development. It's, it's, it's development in the sense of developing our people, developing our assets as a community so that we can all grow stronger. And one of the most important assets of our community is our culture. It is, it is our renderings. It's that creative expression. You know, I often say that, you know, economic development can sometimes be kind of bland and it can kind of be kind of cookie cutter, you know, if you don't actually inject enough of your own culture and personality and community into it. And really, that's what that's what the art does. That's what the mural does. That's what our, our culture does. It, it is the soul of the community, because otherwise you could just you could put any part, any part of any other city, you could take any other part of any other city and call it, you know, um, uh, you know, economic developed or improved but it is our it is our culture and and these kinds of artistic expressions which amaze me because i have no artistic bone in my body right i could not draw a stick man right if you ask me to and so i see these kinds of uh works and I, i'm just floored by it and when people drive through the west side when they come to the west side what they take away more than anything else needs to be that that this is where San Antonio is, is deeply expressing itself through the art and, and through, the, through the creative imagery um, that, that people experience. And so I think that's what people take away when they leave the West Side. And that's exactly what it should be. And that needs to remain even as we continue to grow stronger and bring more economic opportunity. That that not only has to remain, that needs to get bigger, that needs to get stronger and be better supported. Yeah, thank you so much. And you've actually answered in part this question about what the benefits of having murals in our city and communities are, but also then how do we, you know, like we saw the Cassiano Holmes murals in the, the video that we watched, and, and those were some of the first murals in San Antonio created in the late 70s, early 80s. You know, how do we um, preserve those? I know there's a lot of development happening in Apache courts and potentially Cassiano Holmes. How do we preserve that, that history and then, and how do we support muralism? And, and maybe Ben can come in here as well in terms of how are murals uh, financed in terms of, you know, production and then and restoration and, and protecting them. Um, um, I'll make one comment and then I'll offer to Ben, you know. Okay. I, I worked at the city of San Antonio for a long time. And the one thing that I think uh, the city did very well in terms of it's uh, bond appropriations when you know bonds are issued is that one percent that tends to get kind of set aside for public art you know the the, the key to encouraging and supporting and preserving our artists and our culture is being intentional about it. it is not hoping that it's going to happen on its own but being intentional in the way that we program it into all the things that we do so that we make sure that it's there you know there are other programs like that i think that where there where there is an expenditure of funds on something 
let's make sure that we have some kind of intentional carve out for public art to make sure that we're encouraging that piece to continue retelling that story of San Antonio and our artists uh, and our culture. Yes, absolutely. And I know it's kind of a tough time right now with COVID and, and uh, some of that, that money to fund the arts comes from the, the hotel tax, right? And I know that those, I'm sure those revenues are, are really down, not to put a downer on things, but we are in a different reality right now, right? So Ben, how, how is San Anto Arts going to survive uh, our situation right now? Thank you, Ramiro, for you. Yeah, thank you everyone for participating in this was a great discussion. And um, I mean, that's a good question, right? How, how do organizations like San Anto survive something like this? And how do we, how do we ensure that we, we continue to do the work that we're doing? I think that uh, you touched on it, Ramiro, a lot of our funding comes from the city of San Antonio. Um, we rely on them quite heavily and they do have a, um, uh, our monies do come from the hotel occupancy tax. So without people traveling, without people coming to San Antonio and, and staying in hotels, it, it can have a, a, a profound effect on our funding. And I think that that's something that we need to be mindful of moving forward and, and really being intentional, like Lomito said, about making sure that organizations like ours, you know, not just us, but a lot of different organizations throughout San Antonio have the, the funding they need to, to be bringing muralism, art, music, all the different things that, that, that our organizations do in San Antonio, making sure that they're there for San Antonians. Uh, it's important, you know, on the west side, south side, east, north, downtown, it's important for all sectors of the city. And so I think that our work as an organization and the organizations like ours, we touch many different pockets of the city. And I think that, that needs to be recognized. Sorry, there's a bug in here. Um, but also it's, um, you know, I, I think one of the things we do have to think about is, uh, and all the artists talked about this, incorporating community in the work, making sure that community has a voice in that. And I think that by showing community um, that we're listening to them and that the work that is being created is, is from their input, that they're going to want to support organizations like ours. They're going to want to tell the city uh, and other funders um, how important this work is, not just to them, but to their neighborhoods, uh, to their families, to their friends, to, to the business owners that, that murals go, you know, that we use their walls for, for art. And so I, I think we have to, as an organization, show that value. And then I think community can say how valuable that is to them. And then city, uh, county, and other, other nonprofits that give money and other organizations and foundations that give money can see the value from community members themselves. Absolutely, and and also Adriana, maybe you would like to talk about your funding of yours and Anna's recent mural because that was quite innovative. How you went about financing that, right? Do you, you need to unmute yourself? Sorry. So Anna and I were approached uh, by a friend of ours who knew um, these two women who really wanted to do something about um, what had happened to Vanessa Guillen. So Tracy Talavera and Stephanie Melancor, they were they were the one they were part of a larger group, uh, the Latina Leadership Institute alumni. Um, who wanted to to create a mural, and it was th them that they are the ones who fundraised. They did a GoFundMe page uh, to raise funds so that Anna and I could get uh, materials. And so all the the funds that were raised, uh, we got materials. Anna and I waived our fee, and um, um, any leftover any monies after materials were donated to the Guillen family. Um, so it really stemmed out of uh, the, this community of women wanting to to enact change and wanting to 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 show their love and support for the Guillen family. Thank you, thank you so much. I mean that also speaks to content, both yours and, and uh, the recent Mujerista, well, all of the Mujerista murals are so, are very powerful. And uh, so 
maybe we could just reinforce what is it that's unique about muralism to San Antonio? What is the content and the themes, the message that you all would like to see or that you think, you know, the community wants to see on their walls, on our walls? Um, Reese, would you like to, to address that? What, what the community wants to see on our walls? That yes, and, and what, what you think is unique to San Antonio muralism. And, and you know, I mean, I know that what, what the community wants to see on our walls is not necessarily what's driving, you know, your, your um, well, maybe it is, you know, because com community input is so important in the production of, of these murals. Um, so it's hand in hand, it's a dialogue. Right. The content and the themes that go up on the walls are very much a dialogue between our community and ultimately what you, what you paint there. Um, so, so maybe it's, maybe it's organic, um, but maybe you could talk about you, you in particular, what is it, what, what is your vision or what, um, what is the future of muralism for you in, in San Antonio? Or maybe you'll go back to your private practice. I don't know. <laughs> private practice, your personal, your personal maybe, practice. You know, I, they're, to me, I treat them as two separate things. Mm -hmm. um, there's certainly connections, um, but it, there is, out, there is um, you know, remaining true to your artistic integrity when you're painting murals. But, you know, what makes it unique in San Antonio, specifically, you know, I can speak from working with San Anto, um, you're talking about dialogue. It was an actual dialogue with the community. Uh, meetings are held to get their feedback prior to even, you know, finalizing um, a mural design because we, we do want to know what the people in that neighborhood, what do they want to see? And, you know, for us as artists, it, it does matter. It, it, they, they should be reflected, they should be able to see themselves and relate to the mural that they're going to live with, that they're going to pass by, they're going to walk by multiple times a week. Um, so I honestly think we're not doing our job as artists unless we do engage with them and get that feedback. Um, you know, I, I work in an, I'm here, I'm working, at, I work in an art museum and as much as we want museums to be accessible to everybody and of, of course they are um you know you have to have an entrance fee to get in you have to have transportation over to alamo heights texas to visit this particular museum and um you know it's it the truth is it's not always accessible to everybody um to, to get here or to even feel comfortable coming here as much as we do again you know make this a place for everybody i think that the art out and the mural is on the street. It's it's bringing art outside of the gallery and putting quality art out there for for everybody to see for free. Um, yeah. Yes. So um, I don't know if I'm getting off track here, but no, that, no that's that's, just, fantastic. that's so very important. You know, um, when you start looking at a lot of murals, you can start. You know, every you know, certain cities or countries have their own style. Uh, you know, Brazil, you can kind of tell the difference between a Danish mural and a Brazilian mural. Uh, you know, here in San Antonio, I mean, I just, I keep saying it, they, it just reflects exactly what's around. There's cactus around us, you're going to see cactus in the mural. There's brown people around us, you're going to have brown people in the mural. Um, we want to capture everybody, you know, but um, again, it's the, the direct, neighborhood that that mural sits in it needs to be reflected otherwise yeah we yeah. we fed basically and 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 i guess how we feel like that we're doing the right the right thing is when we are out there in your painting and i'm sure uh, you know anna and adriana just went through this process recently and I'm, I'm i'm sure they've had people walking by and they kind of encourage you they kind of thank you they you know some are in awe and some are just like okay People, people care. We do matter. She mattered. We matter just the same. So um, that to me felt like success. You know, even when a mural's a quarter complete, you already feel like you're doing 
you're doing the right thing. Yes. What, what has been the reception? Maybe, Anna, you could speak to the reception for the mural that you and Reese painted of, uh, on honoring Claudia. And maybe, Adriana, you could speak to the reception for the mural you just inaugurated for Vanessa. Um, when, we, uh, when we decided to do the mural on Claudia, I was a little bit afraid because it was during, you know, the whole Trump situation and all these like opposing views that are just very like militant or whatever um i was scared that like it's like oh you know like it was it was gonna be i don't know that it was either gonna be vandalized or someone was gonna get down and tell us something or i don't know but it was it received so well i mean people who were like from el salvador from central america not even El Salvador stopped by and just kind of, you know, thanking us for the representation, you know, because um, San Antonio does have, you know, all these murals and, you know, we just see, I don't know, it was just another reminder that we're all in this together, like all of the brown people. Uh, when then you have people like stop by and like they share their connection, like they, everybody stops and, I mean, some people stop and have, they have a story on how this affected them or how you know, or how they heard about it, how does it make them feel? And it just like, it was just a very cathartic experience. It was, yeah, it, it was, uh, it was, yeah. Each, each mural is like its own experience and you, you meet like a certain set of people and they're, you listen to a certain set of stories and it's just, yeah, it just makes it all worth it. I don't know, it's like a labor of love. Mm. And it's like, you feel like you're doing something positive like great to you know just what we said is like you feel like you're doing the right thing and it's really weird to have that feeling when you're making art especially you know even majoring art. it's like what are you doing but you know a painting in the mural and 103 degree weather it we sure we we complained a little bit about it but it was it was so worth it i would do it all over again both of them <laughs> thank you Adriana. You need to unmute again. I keep forgetting. Oh. Like Reese and Anna were talking about how people approach you as you're creating the mural um, and they share with you their personal stories. Um, and, and in particular, when we were doing the Vanessa Gann mural, um, that happened a lot. And, um, um, and, and I and I I want to say it gave people permission to talk about something that they don't necessarily talk about in the open all the time, mm -hmm. because we don't need that permission. But it, maybe it provided a space where they felt comfortable to talk about um, issues that might have affected them uh, in ways of sexual harassment or mm -hmm. sexual violence. Um, and so that I think is really beautiful. And, in, in the sense that it really had mujeres talking to other mujeres about their life experience. Um, so that I will always keep that with me and um, move forward with, with that in my heart. Mm -hmm. Teresa, can I, yes. can I just add, um, sure. you know, you, you talk about uh, the things that make San Antonio muralism unique and you have it here. It's, it's the artist. It's a big part of it the artists that understand just the community here, they're from here, or, you know, they've lived here a long time, mm -hmm. and they really are passionate about this work. They, they really do care. And I mean, you, you're seeing that today, just their level of commitment to, to listening to community and really understanding what, what importance that has to, to neighborhoods, to, to families, to, to just community members who, who care about these issues and who want to see um, these things either addressed or acknowledged or just, you know, awareness around them. And the artists are a big part of what makes San Antonio muralism so unique and so um, vital, you know, to the city of San Antonio. I think Gramito talked about it just, you know, it's, and it's not just West Side, right? It's, it's artists from all over coming together, but really listening to community and, and, making that input heard. Uh, the, we, we couldn't do our work without having artists that were this committed 
to, to the vision of, of what community members uh, want to say. And then I'll, I'll finish off with the other side of that is having uh, business owners or wall owners who also are committed to this process who, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a leap of faith putting something like that on your wall, you know, having an image like that on your wall and just, uh, you know, they don't know if they're going to get any pushback either on that. They don't know what people are going to say. So the, the business owners really have to believe in that too and have an understanding of what, what this means to community and how it can build community around them and, and it allows for community members to have a voice. So the artists and business owners here in San Antonio really, really understand what art means and what it can what it can do um, to sort of heal. Mm. Maybe, Ben, could you make a plug for breaking the cycle because it needs a new home, right? What's, what is the situation with that mural by Mary Agnes Rodriguez? Right. So that's, that's a, that was our 20th mural. It was uh, made back in 2002. And the owners of that building, um, you know, they, they reached out to us and let us know that they, they wanted to sell that building and they, they needed to kind of rehab it and, and fix it up. And so that, that's what I'm talking about. They didn't have to let us know about this, but they did, you know, because they, they understand the importance of the mural and they, they reached out to us. And this is a mural that had been um, uh, starting to crack. The wall was in pretty bad shape. And so we knew that we were going to have to do something about this mural, either um, uh, probably move it somewhere else, you know, and, and with the owner letting us know that happened, we went ahead and, and said, like, we're going to find a new home for it. So uh, Breaking the Cycle, Mary Agnes was the lead artist on that. Um, the theme around that is domestic violence and building awareness around that. And um, so we are currently looking for a, a replacement wall for that uh, business owner who, who does understand the importance of that message and uh, can it's not an easy topic, you know, to have under wall. It's something that um, it, it, it's, it can be a little disturbing to think about. And I think that the images, uh, depending on what they're going to be, can also uh, bring up things that we don't usually talk about or like to talk about. So um, it, is an, it is a mural that needs a, a wall owner who understands that, who appreciates that, and wants to build awareness around that. And so um, we don't need to find something immediately. You know, we want to find... The, the right space for it. We want the owner, the artist, the community around there to feel comfortable with this mural. And we want to take our time to find something that, that will work for, for everyone. And so um, we, we have time to, to put it up, you know, and I think that what we want to do is sort of think about it now. It was created in 2002. So how is that message relevant in 2020? And how do we, how do we you know, continue to tell stories? We're, we're hearing from community members that, um, they don't want it just to be about violence against women that, you know, men are also, uh, you know, affected by domestic violence. And really, you know, you think about youth and seniors and there's even pets, right? Like there's a lot of sort of violence that can happen in a, in a, in a mm. home. And so uh, these are things that we can address through art. And, you know, it's easily digestible when you see those images. It's not someone preaching to you. It's not someone lecturing you. It's just someone making you aware of, of these issues. And I think that if we can find a, a wall uh, somewhere, I would say Antonio, hello, out there, <laughs> that, that would like this, um, you know, sort of awareness, then please reach out to us. They can either go to our website or they can reach out to our email. It's murals at sananto.org and uh, they can just reach out to us and we can start the dialogue. Excellent. Thanks so much. So we just have a few minutes left and so I'd like to, to ask you for any final comments, but maybe uh, David also you could just quickly tell us where you're at with the restoration of La Musica de San Antonio. Just a quick kind of wrap up. Uh, you're muted. Yes. I'm muted. Thank you. So, so this this project um, has been ongoing. Um, it's well before the pandemic, everything got kind of, uh, of course, derailed. Like everything in this world got derailed. But these uh, online episodes we're having to again continue the fundraising efforts and to also progress the mural as kind of a, a variety of show per se. Where we have guests, uh, guests that are going to talk. We either have some relation to the musicians 
the 10 musicians that are featured on the mural, whether it's family or former colleagues. Um, but the intentions are to wrap it up in, in the spring after after winter um, comes and goes. Um, but in the meantime, the, 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 it, it'll be a, a continued effort here in my studio on South Presa. Thank you. Thanks so much, David. Um, did you share your, yes, we, we need to let people know that you have uh, a website for La Musica that right. they can go to. La Musica Mural.com. It has a lot more uh, information in history and um, I'll post regular uh, progress photos on that as well to keep the, uh, the community engaged. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. And um, perhaps Elvira, Elvira, are you still here? Would you want to share any upcoming events? Uh, that are happening at UTSA or organized by UTSA uh, around Hispanic heritage? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for today. This was a wonderful discussion. Please uh, join us at uh, UTSA to learn more about what other events that are taking place for Hispanic Heritage Month. So it's utsa.edu. And right on the, the start page, you can uh, see a listing of all the events that we have planned. And you can participate in any of these events by just going directly to that page. So thank you. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks again, Elvira, for organizing the panel. I wish we had, you know, another couple of hours to, to continue this discussion. It's I was just very... thinking the same thing. I yeah. could talk about this for hours longer easily. We could be four hours. <laughs> easily. <laughs> Yeah, th thanks so much, everyone, for taking the time to be here in this space today. And we look forward to the future projects uh, and, that we'll see from you. And thank you for like introducing us to this entire world and introducing Sharice and I to uh, Sananto. And Adriana, you were the director when we started. And I'm just, it's been amazing to be a part of all of this. I'm just honored. And yeah, just, I love it. All of y'all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is an amazing experience. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. So shall we shall we sign off and sign off? We'll see you all soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Great discussion. See you all next time. Okay. Bye, David. Bye.